Hi, welcome to question five of the 2022 paper two of the Leave Cert order level maths. <clears throat> so as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Now, I always assume that you're going to pause and have a go at what's on the screen yourself and see have you got a strategy in place and um, does that strategy match up with what I'm going to try to do. So we have a statement here, an equilateral, now that's an important thing. Um, a scalene triangle has all three angles are of different sizes, okay? Which means that all three sides are different lengths. An isosceles triangle, okay, means that these two angles are equal, therefore these two sides must be the same. In trigonometry or geometry, the size of an angle and the length of the corresponding side have a direct relationship. Okay, so that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Now, in this question, it says an equilateral triangle, P, Q, R, has sides of length 8. So if that's 8 here, it's 8 here, it's 8 here. Now, if the size of an angle has a relationship with the length of the side, doesn't that mean that all three of these angles must be the same? And we can end up with a statement of 180 degrees is equal to an angle plus an angle plus an angle. Now, if we, I suppose, followed algebra on that, a plus a plus a is 3a. And then I want to solve this. So 3 times some angle equals 180. Um, the angle must be 60. Okay, 60 degrees. So that's it, actually. That's the answer. Part a, part 1 says write down the size of the angle p. Q, R, so this one here. Well, they're all the same, so it's 60 degrees. Now, part two says, show that the area of the triangle P, Q, R is 16 times uh, the square root of three. Okay, so they're basically asking us, find the area of that particular triangle. Now, we could go down the route of the trigonometric ratios and using a half base by height, but I imagine there that the easiest formula to use is a half AB times sine of the angle. Now, I can label this triangle whichever way I want, okay? Um, this is fairly handy in that they're all 60, okay? So it doesn't actually matter which angle I use. But I'll use the one I, I found. I'll use this one, okay? So this is the angle C. So I'm going to call that 60. Now, the side, either side of it are the ones you use, and they're both so if I fill in the formula there, so the area is equal to a half 8 times 8 times sine 60. Now that's a calculator job, so let's bring that up. And it's a half times, I'm in stat mode there, so I need to go back to computation. So it's a half times, let's go use the multiplication symbol, 8 times 8 times sine of 60. I just want to make sure my calculator is set to degrees and the D symbol's there. So this should give it to me, and I get the 16 root 3. So my next step is just to declare that. So area is equal to 16 root 3. The units were centimeters, so it's going to be centimeters centimeters squared. And that's it. Okay, I haven't missed anything. I hope not, anyway. So move on to, actually, there's just the answers in the notes. Okay. Um, then it says, hence or otherwise, find the perpendicular height of the triangle PQR, taking PQ as the base. So I've just taken a copy of the actual triangle itself. And what it's saying is, find this particular height he here. No, I'm a terrible drawer. I apologize. Now, remember, that was 60 here, um, and that was 60. So the question is, how do we find this height here? Now, if this is split and straight down the middle, if it's equilateral, that's going to have side 4 and side 4, and that's the trick. Okay. If you want to find, then, the perpendicular height, okay, if you think of taking this triangle here, okay, that's 4, 60, 90. Now, arguably, you can say that's 30, whatever. But that's a right angle triangle. In fact, that's a standard right angle triangle. Okay. 
So it's actually going to be three and five, probably, if I'm not mistaken. Now, it's not drawn to scale, but I'm going to try use the trigonometric ratios here. Okay, I don't have enough information for Pythagoras. And just to remind ourselves that Pythagoras' theorem is this. You need to know two of the three sides to be able to use Pythagoras. So it's not Pythagoras. Now, it's going to be most likely the trigonometric ratios. Okay. I think I have this done in the notes, so I might just jump onto them. My bad writing is just going to annoy people. The sine of an angle relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And that's the trick with the trig trigonometric ratios. We sometimes just say sine cos tan. That's all they are. Okay, For each angle in the standard triangle, we're relating the sides. Um, sine is, uh, I call it ratio 1, relating the opposite to the hypotenuse. Cos, ratio 2 relates to the adjacent to the hypotenuse, and then tan just relates to the other two sides, the opposite to the adjacent. And it's not something that's on the past math court, but there is secant, cosecant, and cotan, which are just different relationships to the other sides. So if I have my triangle here, okay, so I'm going to focus on this one, I think, here. My, if this is the angle I'm looking at, okay, this is the opposite, okay, this is the hypotenuse, and this four here is the adjacent. So I know the adjacent okay, is four. I've written that down here. I know the hypotenuse is eight, and the angle um, that I'm focusing on is 60. The opposite is what I'm looking for. So which of these three formulas has the opposite in it, but has the other two pieces of information? And for me, there, sine is the one I would always try first. I have the angle. Looking for the opposite, I have the hypotenuse. I have two of the three things, therefore this will work. It's just, do I want to go with that? I think tan would work as well. Um, I have the angle, I have the adjacent, I'm looking for the opposite. Whereas cosine wouldn't work. So there's actually three formulas here. And it's worth memorizing them off. Um, I have a mnemonic that I would use um, with students. Um, the, the one I would have learned in school was like, silly old Harry caught a herring traveling off America, which isn't very memorable. Um, but whenever some people say, so, ka, toa, or oh, hell, another hour of algebra, okay? And mnemonics are very useful devices. And the one I was told by a student years ago, and this is slightly risque, but excuse me, um, I was told this once and I've never forgotten it. And it was sex on hard concrete always hurts the other's arse. Now, it's a bit risque, but like it's memorable. We all, I have a dirty mind. And mnemonic doesn't have to be clean. It can be whatever helps trigger a memory in you. And you know, trying to learn off somebody else's mnemonic can be harder than just trying to force the piece of information into your brain. But something like this, you don't want to be worrying about what is that formula? What, you know, you, if you know it straight off, you can write it down quickly and then you can just make a judgment call, which formula will work. Now we said we go with sine, so we have the angle. We're looking for the opposite. We have the hypotenuse. Now once I have these in place, okay, the statement now, I've, I've got a chunk of marks now. Okay, I've chosen the right strategy. I've shown I know which, what, what to do. Now it's just the algebra. And I'm going to try to get rid of the eight on the bottom here. Now, the way to get rid of something on the bottom of a fraction is always to multiply by it. So that the, the, it'll be multiplying by the top. So they will cancel. If I do it one side, I have to do it to both sides. Now, I end up with a calculation there. That's 8 times sine 60 or sine 60 times 8. And sine 60 is just a number. So that ends up being, I got the 4 times the square root of 3. It's not an area. It's just a length. So it's 4 times the square root of 3, which, again, is just a number. It just looks weird. Uh, and that's the length of that side. And if the answer came in the form they wanted, they wanted in the form a times square root of something else, which it is, it's four times square root of three. That thing there at the end where a and b are elements of n just means that both of them are positive whole numbers. That's all. So in a way, if that was confusing, and I've had students before, and like when they see this, they get upset. You know, they just, their brains, they go, this is too hard, I can't do this. If they were never told this, Okay, and they weren't letting their brain do, their, do its thing and, 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 and talk them down from, from attempting, they'd probably have a pretty good chance of doing a good job. Okay, 
or at least trying to get somewhere on the low partial or the high partial. Okay. Now the next part there is question five, part B, and it says GHK is a right angle triangle. Okay. It says that the angle GHK, so the H there is 90. So I'm going to write that on there. Okay. Uh, GH is 12, and that's written on the diagram already, and the length of GK is 30, and that's written on the diagram already. And then it says, use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the distance HK. So this distance here. Now they tell me what to do, okay, so I'm going to write out Pythagoras, okay, that's given in the maths tables, okay. This is my C value, and it doesn't matter which I call A or B. So I'm going to call that A and that B, but I could have swapped them around, it wouldn't matter. Now I always say, look, do this, write the numbers out right beneath it. Um, it'll help you make less errors, although I'm a little lazy when it comes to work myself. Once I have this written out, all I have to do now is substitute the number for the letter. I generally say do it in brackets, although it won't actually matter in this question because everything's positive. Now, I'm going to jump to the answer because, again, I ran out of space in but also my writing is terrible. So that's where I left off. Now, if I go left to right, 30 squared is 30 by 30, which is 900. Now, I went with A and B, which is different than what I did in the last page, but it doesn't matter. The unknown squared plus the other side squared, which is 12 squared, which is 144. And then I go, right, I want the letter to stay on one side. I want everything else to be on the gotten rid of, for lack of a better word. So I want to get rid of the, the 144, so I take 144 away from it. I'm allowed to do that, it's algebra. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Now I've created a calculation, 900 take away 144 is 756, but the 144 and the minus 144 have cancelled because that's now zero, so it's gone. So then I'm left with 756 is equal to some number squared, or some number multiplied by itself. Now, one way to resolve that is, if I want to get rid of the square, is to do the opposite to it, which is, is square rooted. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to both. Now, I've, uh, I suppose I've represented that up here. Now, the square root and the square will cancel. And on the far side, the square root of 756, when you turn to a decimal, is 27.495. But the question does say they want the answer left to one decimal place. So I look at the number prior to one decimal place. If it's bigger than 5, the number before it goes up by one, and so nine is bigger than five, so the four goes up to, to, to by one, and you end up at 27.5. The sides of a triangle are length, so it's centimeters. And that's it. I think that's the end of question five, it is. So if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thanks, and see you on question six.